Hi, welcome back to the show. And um, <clears throat> like I said, I led Motivation Monday. We always need a pep talk to get us okay. into the work week because the work week can be very hectic. So you need someone to just inspire you and give you something to hold on to Monday. And we have with me uh, Toye Shobande. He's a strategic leadership. You know, you always have to do this all the time. You have to introduce people very well. Uh, expert lawyer, administrator, and a speaker with a passion for inspiring individuals and organizational potentials to greatness and well, a lot of all of that <laughs> you have to do that on the show you have to inspire people and just let them know the caliber of people coming on the show so welcome thank welcome you to so good, good morning how thank are you, you doing i'm well how are you I'm feeling i mean it's monday morning a lot of people are not they just don't not excited sure. about yeah, they're not excited about monday that. some people are not monday people Mo monday comes with a lot of anticipation of what the week will bring okay. um there's this freshness in the air mm. something good you know you wear a new clothes want to do good it's monday there's some clothes you don't wear on monday because it affects your mood yeah so it determines yeah. the direction of the day direction or the, the week day. most importantly mm. so it probably is the most important day of the week true and i think yeah. it, I, I think sunday is like the most important day because you always need to prepare on sunday you, for monday yeah. for monday true <laughs> okay, so let's get straight to what we're talking about. And this is, I find it's very fascinating. Mm. It's peer leadership, how to lead your former colleagues when you become their boss. Yes. Oh, so let's, let's start because you are in this space, you motivate people, you've led teams, both faith in the faith arena and also in business, mentorship and leadership. So you understand peer yes. leadership. So mm. what is peer leadership? For those who don't understand <laughs> what it leadership. means. Yeah. You so know, it's, it's, it's as simple as the fact that um, when you were in school, mm. probably primary school, secondary school, your colleagues, uh, your teacher just decides to appoint you as the class captain. Mm. And you become the class captain. And your friends, whom you used to make noise together in class, and you write the names of noisemakers together, now suddenly realize you are the class captain. You know, it's kind mm. of intimidating. That's mm. a, a typical example of peer leadership. Mm. So when you now transpose that to um, a work, place mm. where you were either employed at the same time with some people or they came into the organization before you okay. and you now suddenly find yourself becoming the head of the department uh, that's just classically what peer leadership is and what makes you a peer leader is actually your professional competence mm. uh, based on your learning ability through the ropes through the systems you learn and master the process you put your skill to use yes. uh, you develop competencies you gain experience and you have gathered results and you know of course made profits for the organization mm -hmm. and they think oh who is the best person to uh, be the leader or to be the head of the department mm -hmm. based on the professional competency qualifications mm. experience and the result so the person becomes the head of the department mm. now often the competence in terms of the technical expertise is not what makes you a leader and that's where the mistake is okay. so people think becoming a head of the department makes you a leader mm. people think because you are now the captain of the class or you are the head of class or you are the uh, managing director makes you a leader no that's not what leadership is about that's just positional on its own okay. and you arrived at that position because of your technical expertise mm. uh, technical expertise is one of the very first layer for personal development okay let me, let me let me ask because i know we're going to go deeper but a lot of people cannot balance being because there's a way they used to probably relate to the people that were their peers yes so and there's always conflicts let's talk about how how that's the direction yeah, direction yeah, that's the direction di yes. dealing with that conflict that's it so at that level you have the technical expertise. Mm. You become the head of the department. You don't naturally possess the leadership competency. What you just have is the technical expertise. Mm. Why? Because leadership in itself is a soft skill. And one of the most important ingredients of, that, uh, ingredients of that soft skill that you need to display when you become the head of the department is your positive attitude. Because mm. um, it's an exchange. It's exchange of energy. So if I become head of department amongst my peers, my attitude on the job, especially when I resume work, mm. will determine the way they will respond to me. Okay. So if my attitude is condescending and I'm not showing humility, they will not be receptive to my leadership. Mm. They will not be receptive to the instructions that I give. So that's where the conflict comes in. So the first point of call is to measure your own attitude and ensure that your attitude is positive. Nobody wants somebody who is loyal, especially when they know your background. Mm. They knew how you started. <laughs> they knew when you were all saying yes sir yes ma'am to that person you know and all that so they knew they know virtually everything about you so for them to accept you as their leader you need to communicate well and communicating well requires that you e enable trust mm. and loyalty so 
for example, um, there are certain magic words that you need to use for your colleagues. For okay. professional purposes, the word please, the word thank you. Mm -hmm. The fact that you become the head of the department does not make you superior to your colleagues. Mm. I, like, so when I you, like how you said that. The yeah. fact that you're head of, does not make you superior to your it colleagues. It doesn't make you superior. Because so when you go to work with that sense of superiority, that's where the conflict arises. Mm. That's where, because, mind you, when they were to select head of department, you were not the only choice. You were not the only candidate. There were some other people. Probably they picked you. Someone else would be beefing you mm. that I should have been in that position. I don't know whether you have experienced it sure, before. Sure. And it will create conflict. And that person will have their own support system. They will have their own people. They will have their own friends. Mm. So if you don't communicate to get their trust, to gain their confidence, if you just come, that's one other area of crisis, apart from the element of humility or this sense of superiority, is when you don't communicate with them to give them a sense of belonging. Okay. What if you communicate? Because this, you know I've said all this because it's very practical in every work environment. So yes. someone who's watching has the same issue. Yes. Organizations, churches, every single place. Yes. So how do you not deal with the crisis when the people that were your friends uh, mm -hmm. cannot identify that this is a boss? Yes. They can't transition in their head. So they're like, yes. no. Uh, like you said, I know this person. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you handle it as the boss? The first point of call, humility, humility, humility. Mm. Be humble. And being humble is to deny yourself any sense of superiority. Now, the element of the communication is this. Communicate from their perspective, not your own perspective. Don't try to impose your own ideas on them. When you become the head of a department, don't try to make changes yet. Don't do something new yet. Create an effort towards collaboration. Mm. Get them to submit their ideas. Ask them. How best can I help you to do your work so that you can perform better? The result you are getting on your job, mm. is it meeting the interest and the target of the organization? What hardship are you experiencing? When you show love, you show compassion, you show genuine interest in their work, not in just the results. Mm. You're not just concerned about the results or the nature of the work they're doing. You're concerned about their welfare. You're concerned about um, their ability to, 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 you know, to, to their, their sleep patterns at home, their, their mm. personal lives. They won't just open up to you easily. But when they see that you are consistently genuine, when they see that you are consistently interested in their welfare, they will open up to you. Mm. You'll be able to get their trust. You'll be able to get their buying. And that's one of the most critical elements of leadership. And that's why I said leadership in itself is a soft skill. Aside the sense of superiority, humility in bringing yourself down to their level mm. and knowing that, guys, I'm still part of you. Forget to say I'll be head of department or I'm here. I'm mm. for you. Mm. You know, when you come from that angle and you... Ask, let's say you have a new idea, you run it by them. You call for a meeting or you call individuals and ask for the idea. They, they'll be excited. They'll feel close to you. Mm. They'll feel indebted that, okay, so Tolu, what do you think? We're about to make this decision. Management says we should do this, do this, do this. You run this data, you run a survey among your colleagues. You get their input. Once you have that buy-in and they give their input, those crises will become very reduced and minimal. Mm, but what we find out sometimes is a lot of people, when they get into power, cannot handle the power, so they are quick to show themselves. So that's already like causing friction. So exactly. how do you now deal with the person or Training. personality of the person Training. who is not the best fit, like you said, yes. but happens to be the one leading? Exactly. So before that person is thrown into the fire or thrown into the midst of wanting to lead, the question is what training has the uh, person been exposed to? What people management skills has the person developed? Because those are soft skills. And sometimes organizations are focused on getting results that they are not focused on the people management side of the business. Mm. So before you, whilst you are developing competence and expertise in your chosen profession, you must also understand that there are certain soft skills. So at a certain level, when you are growing through the ranks of the organization, what matters most on your performance review is your expert knowledge. When you become, when you get that to that managerial level, your expert knowledge does not count anymore. It's now your people mm. skills. So the question is, whilst you are developing professional competence, acquiring more certificates, are you developing people's skills? Mm. Are you developing people's skills on how to talk to people, how to address people, mm. how to defer to people, how to get people's buying? How do you communicate with people? How do you demonstrate um, uh, 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 concern for people? Do you, people do, do you give people recognition when they do the job? Do you acknowledge people? So those soft skills have to be consciously built and developed, and it takes time. Okay. It takes on learning, it takes relearning, and it takes learning. Okay. In terms of really serious crisis, how can that be dealt with? Um, I'll still go back to that element of um, leadership communication. Mm -hmm. 
when there is crisis, the best opportunity to resolve in the crisis is to communicate. So that means the leader shouldn't shy away from the crisis. Why? Because the leader is the broker of talent, like I said. Mm -hmm. So um, crisis often create distraction and it creates a derailment from the strategic objectives of the organization. Mm -hmm. And no leader wants to deal with that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a book that is going mm -hmm. to come out uh, in a few weeks. Time. Yes. It's called Leadership and Organizational Politics. And I address these issues of office politics squarely in it, especially the emotional intelligence that is required on the job. Mm. We all need that. And, and it's part of the soft skills. That emotional intelligence. So there's a part in, in the book where I talked about leadership and conflict, the challenge of conflict. Mm. A lot of leaders shy away from conflict. Some leaders are conflict averse. Mm. They would rather not talk about it. I have an issue with you. I would rather just keep quiet and walk away. I don't want to be confrontational. Being confrontational in itself is not negative. There's a positive dimension to it. If somebody offends me, I walk up to you, I notice your attitude to me is a bit funny. What's mm. going on? Did I say something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Give the person the opportunity. If the person is you, the person might say, no, nothing, nothing happened. No. Mm. Just dig in for that. So I'm sorry if I've offended you in any way. Mm. Don't assume you are right. Don't go to the person with the notion that you are right and the person is wrong. Your, your main focus should be towards resolving conflicts. Wow. Wow, this is amazing. It's just I like how you really give, you're giving so much insight on how people can resolve conflict oh, yes. in the workplace and, of course, manage peer to peer yes. leadership. But with your expertise, you've worked in the, the workplace, engaging teams. What are the tips that every leader mm. should know and have? Just mm. basic tips that can help them manage their peers or manage mm. the people that are underneath them. Just quick tips to help quick, them. Quick. First point of call don't make too many changes, don't introduce too many ideas. Then don't make the work about you. Hmm. Nobody cares how much you know. Nobody cares how competent you are. They just want to know how much you care for them. So the second point is care for people generally. Care for the people you are working with. Care for their welfare. If they don't have a car, but they have to shuttle a bus to work, find out how did they do it. Hope there was no Most traffic. Most buses don't ask those kind You're of not, questions. No, those are the things that will elicit confidence oh. from your colleagues. I, I know how that works. Mm. When they are sick, don't think they are pretending because they want to run away from work. When they have <laughs> challenges at home, they are distracted. Show concern for those challenges. Ask them questions. Sit them down. Ask them about their career aspirations. Ask them, mm. so how far do you want to go? Where do you see yourself in five years' time? How are you managing your finances? No, it's just not enough for us to pay you your salary, and I think, oh, you've earned your salary, and that's all. There's a dimension to recognition. I do something for my guys. I take them out for lunch. Oh. There's a popular mala joint I take them to, you know, and I pay for it. That's when I do the appraisal. That's when I let them know I'm what I don't like, <laughs> what I like. So I take them out for lunch. Mm. Sometimes I take them for a movie. We go watch a movie together. I do that once in a while with them. Mm. That way, I break down their guards. Wow. When you're in the office environment, everybody's guarded. Everybody's putting their best foot forward. But I take them to an unconventional environment. I take them to a lounge where there's music. You know, everybody's relaxed. Mm. We talk. You know, that way, you are gaining their trust. Once you get their trust, you get their loyalty. The next one is the collaborative effort. Once you get the ideas and ask, what do you think about this issue? I'm about to make this decision. And as a leader, don't try to do it all. They don't take credit. Share the credit with people. Mm -hmm. Then don't blame game. Don't do divide and rule. Don't blame. Don't knock people's heads against each other. Don't tell Mr. A this and tell Mr. B this. Don't do that. People will know. If you tell Mr. A this and you say, don't tell anybody, Mr. A will surely tell Mr. B. Mr. B too will surely know. And they will be pretending, they will be pretending mm -hmm. with you. That's, that's hypocrisy. They now now create a, a toxic work culture. And when you have a toxic work culture, you will fail as a leader. Mm. And for you to get the collaborative efforts of your colleagues at work, for you to get them to collaborate with you, to work with you, you have to earn their trust. And I cannot overemphasize this. Trust is very key. If they don't trust you, they will not fight for you. It's like a football coach. The team will play for the coach any day. If they don't like the coach, they'll do anyhow. True. To true, ensure that true. they sack the coach. Mm. So your guys will work for you if you they will, they will put their best foot forward. When they know that at the management table, you are fighting for their promotion. When they know that at the management table, you are speaking to management and telling management, my guys have been working so hard. I think they deserve some rest. I think my guys are not going to leave this year. They deserve to go and leave. Amazing. I think the pay rise for my guys is not being, you know, we, we need to reconsider it. I think we need to begin to benchmark against industry standards. When you begin to push your guys for trainings, look, 
Tolu has been on this job for a very long time. She has not gone for any training in six months. These are the new training opportunities I see for her. Can mm -hmm. we get to put her? When you do that for them, when you see that you are showing so much interest and kindness in their welfare, in their professional it development, helps to, it helps, helps to create that bond. You know, you're speaking the mind of, I think that the way the work environment should be, because typically in Nigeria, apart from even the politics that go on, yes. everybody's looking out for themselves. So yes. these are almost, when someone watching is saying, ah, or more, <laughs> the way Nigerian structure is, it's not, it can't work. I then, sound, it sounds unrealistic. It sounds unrealistic. But I'm saying it from experience because I had some bosses who did that for me. Hmm. Most of the places I had worked before, I still have relationship with those bosses today. That's the way it's I can, to be. I can call them for anything at any time. In fact, sometimes I go to their houses. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much, <laughs> Toy, for really sharing about peer leadership. And Thank I think you. this is what we need to hear in the work environment. Yes. Because if we don't have, we, we, we always, like we talked about the issues that we have in trending, we wow. are quick to blame the government. Yes. But oh, we forget true. that. <laughs> it starts with us. And that's the culture, the blame game. We blame everybody for mm. anything. And, and it's, it's, it's a cultural issue. Mm. A cultural Culture is harsh. It's very harsh. And that's why we, we talk to children anyhow, and we talk to colleagues and staff anyhow. Bring me that thing. Bring me that camera. No, please. No, thank you. Mm. No, uh, great job you did yesterday. Give your colleagues feedback, your, your feedback, peers feedback. I love your presentation yesterday. That was fantastic. I love what you said on mm. air. That was fantastic. When you pay compliments to people, it does something to their psyche. Mm. It shows that they are valued. Yeah, we should not also get carried away by the environment, which kind of, you keep doing the same thing every day, and the environment just conditions, conditions you not us. to yeah. really show empathy. Honestly, yeah. we'll keep going Absolutely. on, but we need to really go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Toy, for really Thank sharing you. and giving insight. Uh, and we'll be good to have you again on the show. Thank Let's talk about much. something else. Um, guys, that's a bit of, not a bit, it's a lot. So if you're watching and wondering how that works, you, you need to learn more. It's mm. a Monday morning. To start your week right, you need motivation. Yeah. We just spoke about peer leadership, how to handle being a boss if you probably were not a boss before, and just indoctrinate you into leadership. Mm. There's a technical experience, but there's leadership that needs to be learned. Thank you so much, Terry, for Thank coming you. on Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next, next, next stop is music. So we have an artist coming right from the show. You know how we roll. Now, Chinke decided to leave me alone. He does that sometimes, and I'm always, always so pissed with him. But today, we'll keep the show moving. Silverbird Today, the hashtag, of course, at Silverbird Television, and the hashtag is Silverbird Today. We will be right back. Don't go nowhere. <laughs>